Okay, hello guys. Let's look at the general chemistry and synthesis of the endocrine sister hormones. We are looking at just the general hormones, eh? Okay. So, my name is Mr. Siwale. Now, the chemistry of hormones. Hormones are classified into into three types. All the hormones we are going to talk about, they are classified into three types. We have the steroid hormones, the the protein hormones, which are also called peptide hormones, and then we have the derivatives of amino acids called the tyrosine or the amines. But don't worry, in the other books you are going to see they will include an extra group like the catecholamines and iodothyronine. Okay, but you'll find that, like for example, the catecholamines, the major common thing here is tyrosine, so they can be classified under these. Then when you look at the iodothyronine, uh, there's also a tyrosine moiety there. So you find that we can also include them in this classification. So we we'll adopt this classification of hormones, steroid hormones, protein hormones, and uh, derivatives of uh, tyrosine. Now, when you look at the protein hormones, the common thing is amino acid from biochemistry. Okay, this is a structure of an amino acid. It's made up of the amino group, the carboxyl group, the R side chains, and the H. So all protein hormones they have such arrangement like insulin, glucagon, those are protein hormones. And most of the hormones of the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary glands, they are protein hormones. And then we have the steroid hormones. The steroid hormones, they have this steroid skeleton. Okay. They all come from uh, cholesterol. And we know that cholesterol is, can be synthesized, can also be obtained from diet. So this is the steroid uh, skeleton ring, which is common to all the steroid hormones. As you can see, it has three cyclopenti uh, uh, three cyclohexyl rings okay abc these are three cyclohexyl rings and then it has one uh, cyclopentyl ring okay As you can see how similar it is with uh, the the cholesterol so all steroid hormones are derivatives of uh, cholesterol which is modified by removal or addition of side chains Okay, hydroxylation or aromatization of the steroid nucleus. And then we also have another class called the amine hormones. The common thing about the amine hormones is that they are made up of this amino acid called tyrosine. As you can see, the structure of tyrosine, it has a cyclic uh, moiety there on, the, on its side chain. Okay but it continues to have these other functional groups, the carboxyl and the amine group. So example of uh, hormones under this class, we have epinephrine, which is released by the medulla of the cortex. I mean, the medulla of the adrenal gland. And then we also have dopamine and then no epinephrine. Okay. So these are, you can see they have the common uh, tyrosine structure here. So all these, they belong to the amine hormones. Now in terms of synthesis, how are the peptide hormones synthesized? They follow the same traditional synthesis of uh, proteins. Okay. In the nucleus, the genes for the hormones is transcribed into a uh, messenger RNA. That is step one in the nucleus and then the messenger RNA is transferred to the cytoplasm and translated on the ribosomes to the first protein product forming what we call a preprohormone. Okay, the messenger RNA moves out of the nu uh, passes through the nuclear membrane and uh, enters into the cytoplasm. It finds the ribosome there, that's where there will be synthesis of proteins. The first protein to be synthesized to be called the prepro hormone or uh, prepro protein. And then number three, the signal 
okay, I think there's something that was missing here. But number three, what's happening is that uh, the prepo hormone in the endopl uh, endoplasmic reticulum it is cleaved, okay, to it is modified by the endoplasmic reticulum to form what we call a prohormone. Okay, and then number four, the pro hormone is transferred to the Golgi apparatus where it is packaged in secretory vesicles. Number five, the final hormone is stored in secretory vesicles until the endocrine cell is stimulated by an appropriate stimul stimulant. So this is a general mechanism involved in synthesis of, of uh, peptide hormone. So when you hear the term protein synthesis, mainly we are talking about synthesis of hormones, synthesis of enzymes. Okay. And then when you look at the synthesis of uh, steroid hormones, we said steroid hormones, they all come from cholesterol. They are all synthesized from cholesterol. So uh, hormones, I mean cells that synthesize uh, steroid hormones, they are called uh, steroidogenic, steroidogenic cells. So we have steroidogenic cells in the adrenal cortex. We have steroidogenic cells in the testis, in the ovaries. So the, it follows the same. For example, if we want to synthesize aldosterone, there's a pathway. The first common is called pregnenolone. So pregnenolone, it's a it's it's common in all these uh steroid hormones that is aldosterone cortisol and the sex hormone like the androgens okay pregnenolone so now the pregnenolone will be worked on by series of enzymes we won't really go into detail but we need to know that the there are enzymes involved for example pregnenolone will be converted to progesterone by this enzyme called 3 beta hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase. And then the progesterone will be converted to 11 deoxycorticosterone by 21 beta hydroxylase. And then 11 deox uh, deoxycorticosterone will be converted to corticosterone by 11 beta hydroxylase. And then the final hormone like aldosterone will be converted by by this enzyme called aldosterone synthesis. Okay, so this is under the stimulation of angiotensin II. And we know that angiotensin II is released in a condition where there is low blood pressure. So here what you need to know is you just need to know the products, the, the sequence, the sequence is involved and the enzymes involved. So in this direction you can see there are enzymes involved in synthesis of these uh, dehydro uh, plandosterone, uh, okay, which can either, which will be converted to these androgens. So there are enzyme involved. So deficiency of enzyme, for example, in this pathway, 17 hydroxylase, it will mean that there will be more synthesis of other hormones. Okay, there will be more synthesis of other hormones. So if there's any different deficiency in this enzyme, it means there will be accumulation of aldosterone, which is called hyperaldosteronism. So we'll talk about those later on. And then the biosynthesis pathway for catecholamines, we say the common thing is tyrosine. The enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase converts it to L-dopa, and then the L-dopa is converted to dopamine by dopa decarboxylase. And then the dopamine is converted to no, no epinephrine by dopamine beta hydroxylase. And then no, no epinephrine, it is converted to epinephrine by the uh, phenylethylonamine methyltransferase. So even here, there's, it's a series of enzymes. Okay. So this is a synthesis of, uh, of, uh, uh, these catecholamines. So, this is what is this is the way dopamine is synthesized. This is the way no epinephrine is synthesized. This is the way epinephrine is synthesized. 
So dopamine is the first thing that is synthesized. It can be converted to no, no epinephrine. It can be converted to epinephrine by enzymes. So on this uh, right side, we have degradation. Okay, so degradation, these are degraded into various acids. Okay, we'll, we'll not talk about this later on. We'll talk about this later on, but we it's important to know that uh, dopamine may be converted to these products. No epinephrine may be converted to these. And this can be measured in even in uh, body fluids such as urine, which is a very important uh, measurement to assess the levels of these uh, uh, catecholamines. And then the synthesis of thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones are synthesized from uh, what we call the follicular cells. They need iodine in their, synthes in their synthesis. I'm going to explain this later on when we look at the thyroid gland in detail. But it's just important to know that synthesis of thyroid hormones requires iodine. Okay, requires what? Iodine. So thyroid gland contains a number of spherical structure called follicles. Follicles are the basic functioning unit of this gland. It consists of the follicular cells, okay, parafollicular cells, and the colloid. So this one is more clear. So this whole thing here, it's a follicle. I mean, it's the... The whole thing here shown here, it's a follicle, okay? So within the follicle, there is the follicular cells. These are follicular cells. This is where synthesis of uh, thyroid hormone takes place. And also there's involvement of this space here. It's called the colloid. So after synthesizing, the thyroid hormones are stored in this colloid. And then when they are needed, they move back into the thyro into the follicular cells and then they are released into circulation. And then we also have the C cells here. The C cells they synthesize calcitonin. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So actually, I'm done. So this is basically how synthesis of thyroid hormones takes place. We've looked at how biosynthesis pathway for catecholamines take place. That the common thing is tyrosine converted to dopamine, no epinephrine, epinephrine. So there are just series of enzymes involved. If you want to remember, you need to form a, a mnemonic, which is very important. Steroid hormones also in this pathway, these are the enzymes involved to synthesize minocorticoids such as aldosterone. And in this direction, these are the enzymes involved. In this direction, these are the enzymes involved, just like that. And then we said deficiency of any of these enzymes will cause accumulation of other products or other steroid hormones. Okay. So thank you very much. We'll end here.